it could happen anywhere, at any time, to anybody. It is sudden cardiac arrest. Sudden cardiac arrest, SCA, is a leading cause of death in the United States and many countries throughout the world. Currently, fewer than 5% of the victims of sudden cardiac arrest survive. But there is a tool you can use that greatly increases the SCA victim's chance of survival. The Heart Start On-Site Defibrillator. Small, automated defibrillators are already being used by a variety of trained responders to treat sudden cardiac arrest caused by ventricular fibrillation, the most common cause of SCA. Ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic quivering of the heart muscle and can occur for a number of reasons. During ventricular fibrillation, the heart cannot pump blood effectively. The patient becomes unconscious, stops breathing, and has no pulse. The only effective treatment for ventricular fibrillation is defibrillation. Defibrillation involves delivering an electric shock across the heart using special adhesive pads applied to the patient's bare chest. When defibrillation is performed within the first few minutes of cardiac arrest, it often stops ventricular fibrillation, allowing the heart to resume a regular rhythm and pumping action. For each minute that CPR and defibrillation are delayed, the victim's chance of survival decreases by 7 to 10 percent. Early defibrillation greatly increases a sudden cardiac arrest victim's chance for survival. The Heart Start on-site defibrillator from Philips makes it possible for a broad range of rescuers to respond to sudden cardiac arrest. It is designed to be fast to learn and easy to use for the ordinary person in the extraordinary moment. This video provides the basic information you need to operate and maintain the Heart Start on-site defibrillator from Philips. A Heart Start on-site defibrillator user should also have training in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, and defibrillator use. First, let's take a quick look at the layout of the Heart Start on-site defibrillator. Pulling this green handle turns on the defibrillator and begins the voice instructions. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. The handle is part of a removable, hard protective cover on the defibrillation pads cartridge. The Heart Start on-site uses only Heart Start smart pads. They're available in adult and infant child cartridges. As we'll see later, the cartridge contains two adhesive pads on a common liner. This green ready light should be blinking as long as a battery is installed in the defibrillator. It means that the Heart Start on-site has passed its last self-test and is therefore ready for use. Beneath it is a green on-off button, which provides another way to turn on the defibrillator and, when pressed and held down, is used to turn off the defibrillator. Below the on-off button is a blue button with an eye on it. This is the information button, or I button. It comes on when the Heart Start on-site can provide information, such as CPR coaching, if you press the button. Next is a triangle-shaped caution light. It comes on when the defibrillator is analyzing the heart rhythm or delivering a shock, as a reminder that you should not be touching the patient at these times. The orange button with a lightning bolt symbol is the shock button. If a shock is advised, the shock button will start flashing and the Heart Start on-site will instruct you to press it to deliver the shock. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. Shock delivered. The battery is located on the back surface of the defibrillator. It snaps into place easily. As long as a battery is in place, the green ready light should be blinking to show that the Heart Start on-site is ready for use. 
Detailed information about all the features of the HeartStart on-site defibrillator is available in the owner's manual provided with the defibrillator. Now, let's run through the sequence for using the HeartStart on-site defibrillator. Hey, did you work out this morning? No, I wasn't feeling too well this morning. Morning, Quentin. Good morning. How did Barbara do last night? She won the game. Terrific. Armando? Armando, are you all right? Armando! Armando, it's Marina. Armando! Quentin, come quick. Armando has fallen. He's unresponsive. Call Katie and tell her to call 911. Okay. Katie, this is Quentin. I'm in Armando's office. He's collapsed and he's not responding. I need you to call 911. Okay, thank you. He's not breathing. Get the defibrillator. It's on the wall by my office. Okay. Defibrillator. We could go down, meet the ambulance, and bring them up. Okay, thanks. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. When patient's chest is bare, remove protective cover and take out white adhesive pads. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel one pad from the yellow plastic liner. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. When the first pad is in place, Look carefully at the picture on the second pad. Peel the second pad from the yellow plastic liner. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. No one should touch the patient. Analyzing. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. Shock delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Okay, just relax. Okay? Right here. It's going to be all right. Hi. Did you what happened? Yeah, we walked in here and he just dropped to his knees and then he just fell down. He was unresponsive. Uh, there's more information if you press the blue button. Okay, great. Let's do that. Okay. One shot, seven minutes. So did you do CPR? Yeah, I did CPR before.
Before using the HeartStart on-site defibrillator, verify that the patient is in cardiac arrest by establishing that the patient is unresponsive and is not breathing normally. Assess responsiveness. If the patient is unresponsive, immediately call 911 or the emergency medical services number for your area. Open the airway and check for breathing. Usually, a person in sudden cardiac arrest is not breathing at all, but sometimes abnormal, ragged breaths occur for a short time after collapse. If the patient is not breathing normally, give two rescue breaths. If the on-site is not immediately available, perform CPR until someone can bring it to you. If in doubt that the patient is in SCA, apply the defibrillator. Using the Heart Start on-site defibrillator is very easy. Place the defibrillator on the same side of the patient that you are on, near the patient's head. If the Heart Start on-site is stored in its optional case, unzip the case. Pull the green handle to remove the hard cover of the pads cartridge. This will automatically turn on the defibrillator. You can also turn it on by pressing the green on-off button. The Heart Start on-site will start giving you clear, calm instructions timed to match your pace. Remove the clothing from the patient's chest, cutting it off if necessary. Then peel the film seal from the cartridge and take out the pads. Next, you must place the pads. Peel one pad from the liner and place it on the patient's bare chest following the illustration on the pad. It does not matter which pad is placed first. Then peel off the second pad and place it. Be sure the pads have been removed from the liner before placing them. If the defibrillator senses a problem with the quality of pads contact, it will instruct you to correct the situation. As soon as the pads are properly attached, the Heart Start on-site automatically begins analyzing the patient's heart rhythm, or ECG. Rescuers should not touch the patient while the defibrillator is analyzing. The triangular caution light will turn on and start flashing as a reminder. The on-site will tell you if a shock is advised. If a shock is advised, the caution light will stop flashing and remain on, and the orange shock button will start flashing. Before pressing the button to deliver the shock, you must make certain that everyone is clear of the patient. Check visually that no one is touching the patient. Instruct everyone to stay clear of the patient. Press the orange shock button to deliver the shock. The shock will not be delivered unless you press the button. After delivering the shock, the on-site immediately tells you to begin CPR and provides a CPR interval. During the first 30 seconds of the interval, you can press the flashing blue eye button and the on-site will provide CPR coaching. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Provide CPR until the patient begins breathing or moving or the on-site tells you to stop CPR or not to touch the patient. Leave the pads attached to the patient and the on-site turned on in case additional shocks are needed. In all cases, continue to follow the defibrillator's instructions until the emergency team arrives. When the EMS team arrives, let them know that the Heart Start can tell them how many shocks it delivered and how long it has been since it was turned on by pressing and holding the blue eye button until it beeps. This information will be helpful to emergency medical services personnel as they continue to provide care to the patient. The Heart Start on-site defibrillator can safely deliver defibrillation shocks to infants and young children up to 8 years of age or 55 pounds using the Heart Start Infant Child Smart Pads. The Infant Child Smart Pads cartridge is easily identified by the teddy bear on the packaging. If you need to use the on-site defibrillator on an infant or child and have an Infant Child Smart Pads cartridge available, remove the Adult Smart Pads cartridge from the device by sliding the latch at the top and lifting out the cartridge. 
remove the infant child cartridge from its packaging and install it in the defibrillator. Be sure to press the cartridge down until it latches into place. Then pull the green handle to begin the rescue. Because of the small chest area of these young patients, the Heart Start on-site infant child smart pads are placed differently from adult defibrillation pads. After removing all clothing from the torso, place one pad on the patient's bare chest between the nipples, exactly as illustrated on the pad. Roll the patient onto her side and place the second pad on the back between the shoulder blades, as illustrated on the pad. The Heart Start on-site defibrillator immediately begins analyzing the heart rhythm and, if needed, will deliver a shock at a lower energy appropriate for infants and young children. Sometimes it is difficult to determine a child's exact age or weight. If a child appears to be older than 8 or larger than 55 pounds, or if infant child smart pads are not available when treating a younger child, use the adult smart pads cartridge. Do not delay treatment to determine the child's exact age or weight. All persons trained to use the on-site defibrillator on pediatric patients should also be trained to provide pediatric CPR and other basic life support. The on-site can provide optional CPR coaching designed to assist rescuers who have had previous training in CPR. When the on-site provides a CPR interval, the blue I button will start flashing and continue for 30 seconds. If you press the I button during this time, the on-site will provide voice instructions to coach you in basic CPR and provide a rhythm for compressions. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. CPR coaching talks you through five cycles of CPR, beginning and ending with compressions. If the infant child's pad cartridge is inserted, the device will provide coaching for applying CPR to infants and children. At the end of the interval, the on-site reanalyzes the heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient during rhythm analysis. If no shock is advised after rhythm analysis, the on-site will instruct you to begin CPR if needed. Provide CPR unless the patient is breathing or moving. After each CPR interval, the on-site re-analyzes the heart rhythm. Continue to follow the defibrillator's instructions until the emergency team arrives. To summarize, after confirming that the patient is in cardiac arrest, pull the green handle on the pads cartridge to turn on the heart start on-site. Peel off the film seal and pull the yellow tab to remove the pads from the cartridge. Remove one pad from the yellow liner and apply it exactly as illustrated on the pad. Then repeat with the second pad. Do not touch the patient while the defibrillator analyzes the heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, clear the patient and press the shock button. Continue to follow the voice instructions until the patient can be delivered to the next level of care or as your protocols indicate.
If the Heart Start on-site defibrillator detects a problem while you are using it, it will provide a voice instruction to guide you in correcting the problem. If this happens, stay calm and follow the defibrillator's instructions. For example, if the Heart Start on-site tells you that the pads are not making good contact, Make sure that the yellow plastic liner is completely removed from both pads. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Pads must not be touching clothing or each other. You should press the pads firmly onto the patient's bare skin. Check that there is no obvious damage to the pads or the cable. If the instruction continues, remove the pads from the patient. Dry the skin if it is wet. Shave the chest if there is excessive hair preventing good contact between the pads and the skin. Then remove the used pads cartridge by sliding the latch on the top of the device and lifting out the cartridge. The Heart Start on site will tell you to install a new pads cartridge. Insert pads cartridge. Place a new cartridge into the cartridge compartment. Be sure to press the cartridge down until it latches into place. The Heart Start resumes its voice instructions for the rescue. Refer to the owner's manual provided with the Heart Start on-site defibrillator for detailed troubleshooting information. There are a few safety issues and other considerations to keep in mind when using the Heart Start on-site defibrillator. They are discussed in detail in the owner's manual. Attach the defibrillation pads firmly to the patient's bare skin. Loose pads may interfere with proper analysis of the patient's ECG. Do not touch the patient during rhythm analysis or when delivering a shock. Clear the patient visually and verbally and move supplemental oxygen and oxygen delivery devices away from the defibrillation pads. However, it is safe to use the Heart Start on-site on someone who has an oxygen mask in place. It is safe to use the Heart Start on-site on wet surfaces. You can also use the Heart Start on-site safely on a metal surface. Take care not to allow the pads to contact the metal surface directly. Patients who have implanted pacemakers or defibrillators can be treated with the Heart Start on-site. The defibrillation pads should not be placed directly over an implanted device. A noticeable lump with a surgical scar should indicate its position. Peel away any medication patches from the patient's chest in the areas where the pads are to be placed. Then remove any remaining residue from the patient's skin. Local protocols for use of a defibrillator may vary. Be sure to review your organization's protocols before using the Heart Start on-site defibrillator. Data management is simple with the Heart Start on-site defibrillator. It automatically stores in internal memory detailed data from its last use, including the first 15 minutes of ECG. As long as the battery is not removed, the ECG data will be retained in the Heart Start's internal memory for 30 days. Other data is stored for up to seven years. Using the on-site's infrared communications port, the data can be conveniently transferred to a personal computer or handheld PDA running one of the Heart Start Event Review Data Management software products. This software allows storage and review of the recorded information. Instructions for transferring the data are provided with the Heart Start Event Review software. With its long life battery, ready light, and automatic self testing, including the smart pads, the Heart Start on site defibrillator is virtually maintenance free. It has no user serviceable parts and should always be returned to Philips for any service needs. Periodically, and after each use of the Heart Start on site defibrillator, you should also check all supplies and spares. 
such as smart pads cartridges and spare batteries for any signs of damage. Check the Use Before and Install Before dates and replace any expired items. Also check to be sure that other equipment stored with the defibrillator, such as rescue breathing barriers, scissors and a razor, are present and ready for use. The HeartStart on-site defibrillator's battery is designed to provide up to 200 shocks or four hours of operating time. When stored in the recommended environmental conditions, a new battery will power the heart start in standby mode for typically four years. Standby means that the battery is installed, the green ready light is blinking, and the heart start is ready for use. To install the battery, remove it from its bag. Turn the heart start over. Insert the bottom of the battery into the bottom of the battery compartment, then press the top of the battery into the compartment. The latch at the top of the battery should click into place. When the battery is inserted, the heart start automatically performs an extensive self-test and will continue to perform daily self-tests. Self-test. In case of emergency, press the green on-off button. Be sure to leave the battery installed so it can perform these self-tests. As long as the ready light is blinking and the heart start is not chirping, you can be confident the heart start has passed its most recent self-test and is therefore ready to use. If the ready light is not on and the on-site is chirping, it needs attention. The blue eye button will be flashing. Press the I button for more information and follow the defibrillator's instructions. For example, if battery power is low, the on-site will tell you to replace the battery. Low battery. Insert fresh battery. When you install a new battery, be sure to let the battery insertion self-test run through both its interactive and automatic parts. The interactive part of the battery insertion test consists of verifying correct operation of the device's orange shock button. If the orange button is flashing, press it. Verified. It is important to press the button when instructed to ensure the heart start on-site defibrillator will be ready to use. If anything does not work as expected, make a note of the problem and contact Philips. When the interactive part of the self-test is complete, the defibrillator runs the automatic part of the self-test. Testing. Reports the test results. Ready for use. In case of emergency, press the green on-off button. And then turns off. Check the ready light to be sure it is blinking. If the ready light is not blinking and the heart start is chirping, remove the battery for at least five seconds then reinstall it and repeat the self-test. If a second self-test fails, contact Philips for service. In the unlikely event that the defibrillator is needed for use while you are running the self-test, simply press the green on-off button or pull the pads cartridge handle to stop the test and turn on the device for use. The Heart Start on-site self-tests also include testing the smart pads cartridge. If the self-test indicates the cartridge is not suitable for use, the heart start on-site will chirp, the ready light will go off, and the I button will flash. When you press the I button, the heart start will tell you to replace the pads cartridge. Pads not usable. Insert new pads cartridge. The smart pads are designed for one use only. After using the pads, you must replace the smart pads cartridge. Installing and replacing the smart pads cartridge is simple. The cartridge has a hard protective cover with a handle. Visible through the hard cover is a film seal imprinted with a diagram of proper placement of the pads. To install the cartridge, press the bottom end of the cartridge into the bottom of the cartridge compartment on the front of the heart start. Then press down the top of the cartridge until the latch clicks into place. 
To remove a pad's cartridge, slide the blue latch at the top of the hard start to the side to release the cartridge. Then remove the old cartridge and replace it with a new one. Do not remove the hard cover or film seal until ready to use the pads. Like any electronic device, the Heart Start on-site defibrillator should be treated with reasonable care. It will operate in temperatures between 32 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit and should be stored at temperatures between 50 and 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Prolonged exposure to temperatures outside these recommended ranges may compromise shelf life and performance. If it becomes necessary to clean the device, follow the instructions provided in the owner's manual. The owner's manual also contains additional information on maintenance activities. The Heart Start on-site defibrillator is designed to be fast to learn and easy to use. Just pull the handle and follow the instructions as it guides you through each step in treating a victim of sudden cardiac arrest. The Heart Start on-site alerts you to any problems it detects and guides you in correcting them so maintenance is simplified. Philips recommends that you train on the device you are likely to use. However, you should also be familiar with the other Heart Start defibrillator models if for any reason you need to use one in a rescue. The Heart Start FR2 Plus features a text screen for display of messages and for the model M3860A, the patient's ECG. The FR2 Plus pads are not pre-connected. To use the FR2 Plus, confirm that the patient is unresponsive and not breathing normally. Turn on the Heart Start FR2 Plus by pressing the green on-off button. Then apply the defibrillator pads and plug in the pads connector. Do not touch the patient while the FR2 Plus analyzes the heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, clear the patient and press the shock button. After delivering a shock, or if no shock is advised, the FR2 Plus will provide a CPR interval paused, begin CPR, followed by reanalysis of the patient's heart rhythm. Continue to follow the prompts from the Heart Start FR2 Plus until the patient can be delivered to the next level of care or as your protocols indicate. The Heart Start FR2 Plus uses special FR2 infant child defibrillator pads to treat patients under 8 years of age or 55 pounds. Equipped with a pink teddy bear shaped connector, these pads reduce the energy delivered by the defibrillator to a level more appropriate for infants and children. To use the infant child pads, turn on the FR2 Plus. Remove all clothing from the child's torso and open the pads package. Place one pad on the patient's bare chest between the nipples and the other on the patient's back between the shoulder blades. Insert the pink connector into the connector socket on the FR2 Plus next to the flashing light. Using the FR2 infant child pads does not change the voice and screen prompts of the FR2 Plus defibrillator. The Heart Start FRX uses a pre-installed pads case. Push the green on-off button to turn on the FRX. Follow the voice instructions. Remove clothes from patient's chest. Access the pads in their gray pads case. Remove one pad from the pads case and apply it exactly as illustrated on the pad. 
then repeat with the second pad. Do not touch the patient while the defibrillator analyzes the heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, clear the patient and press the shock button. After delivering the shock, the FRX immediately tells you to begin CPR and pauses to provide a CPR interval. The FRX provides CPR coaching if you press the flashing blue eye button during the first 30 seconds of the CPR interval. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Breathe. At the end of the CPR interval, the FRX reanalyzes the patient's heart rhythm. If no shock is advised after rhythm analysis, the FRX will instruct you to begin CPR if needed. Provide CPR unless the patient is breathing or moving. After each CPR interval, the FRX reanalyzes the heart rhythm. Continue to follow the defibrillator's instructions until the emergency team arrives. The FRX does not use separate infant child pads. Instead, it uses an infant child key to reduce defibrillator energy. Insert the key into the slot near the top of the defibrillator. Be sure to press the key down until it clicks into place. Icons showing the proper placement are on the key and light up when you turn on the FRX. All heart start defibrillators are designed to be easy to use. 1. Turn on the heart start. 2. Follow the heart start's voice instructions to access and apply the pads. 3. If instructed by the heart start, press the shock button to deliver a shock. The important thing to remember is that regardless of the heart start model you use, operation is similar. For additional information about using each of the heart start defibrillator models, visit www.medical.philips.com forward slash heart start Click on the defibrillator model you want, then click on Demo. You can make the difference between life and death by having a Heart Start defibrillator and being prepared to use it. Heart Start defibrillators from Philips. Power to save a life. <laughs>